Hi everyone, so this question came from Amethyst Joe, and it was as the result of me asking for themes for angel hugs. So I've decided to make this into a separate video because it is a big question and this is the question. It's um, maybe your guides could advise how to find or come to know the true essence, the eternal you and have faith when it's just an idea or mental concept, when there's no real knowing or experience of it. I find I struggle with this now as the idea of its existence isn't enough. I don't know if this makes sense. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. It's it's great. I love it. And um, so I'm going to share with you now what happened when I asked this question of my guides. So first of all, I was told to close my eyes and then I was told to just breathe and become very, very present and to begin a meditation. And in that meditation, I was shown it, what looked like a giant match um, just being lit and then setting fire to my heart. And I know that sounds like a bizarre um, image, but it made complete sense to me on several levels. And what I love about this question is that there is an aspect of multidimensionality in it that I really, really enjoy exploring. So, yes, we can understand things cerebrally. Yes, we can sometimes have a feeling about what things mean in the heart. And then sometimes we have a knowing. And so we're talking about several different levels of perception, in other words, several different dimensions. And so it's really exciting for me to think about how to explain this idea in terms of the experience of all of those dimensions as someone very much in this third physical dimension and constantly exploring other dimensions. I find that really exciting. So the sense that I get about this, when I ask, you know, I understand this, I feel this, I experience this daily, how can I explain what it means, what it is? So this flame that lit up my heart was something of uh, a, a human manifestation of the divine spark. So in other words, we are moving towards experiencing divine presence in the heart while we're in physicality. So uh, similar to the masters. So what I sensed when this flame was lit up fully and my heart was on fire was I suddenly became aware of myself in a huge playground up out of my body in the in another time let's call it the fourth dimension the time between lives and I looked down I was in a playground just playing I looked down on earth and said okay I want to go and play there for a while and when I saw that image and felt that feeling remembered that feeling and and heard that it just seemed so beautifully divinely simple that I actually laughed. It was literally like, I'm playing up here, now I'm gonna play there, and there are other places I play. And it was so simple that I just had to stop. I had to open my eyes, stop, contemplate that, enjoy it, and, and enjoy the sense it gave me that everything else was just suddenly really ridiculous. The struggling, the questioning, the, the angst, you know, all of that stuff, the trying to figure it all out. It just all seemed so sublimely simple and beautiful and playful. And then I got back into my head dimension and I got back into this dialogue that I often have with my guides, which is, but it's not always play. It doesn't feel like play for a lot of us and for a lot of people around the world. What about people who are starving? What about people who are really suffering, people in war-torn countries? What about the struggles that light workers go through in order to become more light, in order to grow more? And I, the sense I got with that was yes, in fact, yes, in order to grow more, in order to become more. And it was as if I was being shown something that was like a puzzle. So. It was like, the analogy was, if you have a book full of puzzles, 
and you decide that you want to play at these puzzles, that you want to figure one of these puzzles out. And in the book, there are several different levels of puzzles. And you start out with an easy puzzle and you think, okay, that was fun. And then you do another easy puzzle and you think, okay, that was fun too. And you go through four or five easy puzzles and you think, okay, they are all fun. But there's got to be something more. There's got to be something more interesting, engaging. That puzzle was very quick. That was very easy. That was very fun. But what else is there? We are by nature curious and explorative and creative. And so we try one of the harder puzzles, something a little bit more challenging. And through doing these puzzles and through going through these pages, and remember every page that we have is still kept in the book and we can see our progress and we can become aware of, of what we've learnt. Um, you know, okay, next time I do a puzzle, I think I'm gonna start by doing the longest words first. Say it's a crossword. I'm gonna fill in long words first and then I'll have the little words to play with. So maybe I'm going to have a tough life to begin with and then it's going to get easier, etc. And then we come back and think, okay, well, okay, this time I'm going to do all the easy words first. And everything that's in that book is in that book forever. And not as a way, you know, we're not going to look at a puzzle book and think, oh gosh, I really got that puzzle badly, horribly wrong. You're just going to think, oh right, yeah, that one was a bit too much for me. Okay, this one was really easy. Um, this one is kind of more my level. This is interesting. I wonder if at some point I'll evolve enough to be able to do the tough ones and find those as easy as the easy ones. In other words, Will I get to a point where I can begin to embody this flame, keep that joy of doing something that is so simple, it's just like the breath of the divine from which I emerged. And I'm gonna come and explore that a bit more in a minute, but that's the feeling. So let's just experience that feeling for a second or two. So with the puzzles, we're seeking to evolve mentally, intellectually, evolve our understanding, give ourselves challenges, and with the lifetime, which is the equivalent in this analogy, we are seeking to grow our soul, our heart, our capacity to love, our understanding of how to expand back into that infinite connection. So then I wanted to know, well, okay, that's all very interesting and it's also very human. You know, we know we have a physical body, then we leave it and we maybe look at that life and, and think, okay, you know, what am I going to do next and, and where do I want to play next? Okay, to use your language. I have this ongoing thing with my guides. We, you know, it's really, really fun and really interesting to have a dialogue with them, to, to be speaking from a human perspective and mentality and understanding and to still be aware that I know I know this, I know I'm just remembering what I already know, but I'm really intrigued by how it feels to experience that separateness and that 3D consciousness and to also be communicating with that part of myself which is somewhere else, which is okay, higher in frequency. And um, I'm not keen on higher and lower, but that's what I just heard, so I'm going to go with that. So, and this is what we understand. This is not necessarily the fact because everything is a circle, but we understand that we are graduating at each step. So then I said, well, okay, what else is there that's more infinite? How can we know our infinite nature? So one thing I can give Joe and anyone else who's asking is that meditation, that initial meditation to experience, to just sit and simply ask to experience your divine nature, your infinite nature, to have faith in it, to have your faith strengthened, to have your understanding strengthened. And then the second thing I thought was, okay, I would like to have a, a wider experience of that. So a wider experience of that infinite nature, a truly infinite experience of this beyond the earth realities, the earth physical lifetimes. And I was shown the spark of creation. This is what I wanted to feel, to have a sense of, to know my part in. The spark of original creation, that original idea that had to be given birth to. Just as you had to be given birth to, there was once a time when infinite creation, which is what we are, had to give birth to itself to its creation of itself. And 
I saw an explosion and a series of sparks and from that explosion I emerged as a spark and that spark was a swathe of bright light and that light looked a little bit like in my mind's interpretation of it the way that we would see an angelic being and I understood in that moment that this is what we all are we are all these angles angels these angles of that divine spark angles many manifestations um, expressions of that divine spark or we are something of a creation of one of those angles, those angels, those manifestations, or rather something that emerged from one of those later, or even in that moment, because everything was one thing, one creation, one explosion at that time, one idea, one thought, compressed and expanded and spread out across your mind, across your perception, across the universe, across all time, all at once. So, in this sense, we are infinite and in this sense, we are more connected than we realise. We often realise our connection to the divine as being that which shows us our infinite nature. In fact, our infinite nature really is represented far more by our connection to each other because we are all, in a sense, each other's mother, father, brother, sister. We are all that so much more than we are this original spark. We are all of it. And the way to remember this original spark is more to remember our connection to each other than to remember our connection with the original spark. I hope I'm making sense. So that's another sense in which we can know ourselves as infinite, to notice our connection with each other, to connect daily at the level of the heart with someone or something that you might question and see as separate and challenge yourself each day and let each of those challenges be like a word in the puzzle, the infinite puzzle. Okay, today I'm gonna to experience my connection with this person who I find very challenging, very difficult, this person who presses my buttons. I'm gonna have a sense of that. And that, being able to do that, having the capacity to do that, is the thing that will remind me that I am love, that I am infinite, that I am connected to that original infinite love of God, source, creation, and that we are all a part of that. I am today going to forgive or understand or embrace a soul I find it difficult to understand or forgive or embrace. And that will remind me of something which is infinite in both and all of us. And finally, as this being emerged from this spark of the divine, I saw that it held a violin. And this is all my mind making sense of what I saw. So it may not literally have been a violin or an angel playing a violin, just work with me. Okay, so, and as this violin was played, with each bowing, there was a string of something, a string of a creation, which emerged as light from this bowing and immediately became manifested in a physical sense or through multi-dimensionals until it became physical as a creation. And so I then understood in that moment that yes, the infinite, understanding of what we are is we are creative we are constantly creating we are infinitely creative and so perhaps the best way to understand our infinite nature and to be constantly reminded of it and to have full and complete faith that we are in the experience of it is to be creative, to make all of our lives a creation, to be aware that our life is a creation, that every life is a creation, and that in every second, in every moment of every life, there is the opportunity to create, to be creative, to be creating something. So even if you're at home all day, make your home a creation. Make each moment that you spend in that home a creation. If you draw, if you paint, if you play music, if you sing, if you dance, be aware that when you are creating, you are 
infinite. You are connected with the creativity of our creator, which is creation, a moment of creation that lives on forever, that has no beginning and no ending. And when you are lost in the moment of your greatest, most loving, most impassioned creation, you are in your infinite nature. So go now, make your life a creation, be aware that your greatest creation is your life and understand that creation and creativity itself is infinite. Okay, I hope that answered your question and thank you for asking it. It was really, really great, full of richness and full of creation and creativity. And um, yeah, I hope you'll come back to this video at some point and it will continue to remind you of that if you lose the way. Okay, take care. Bye.